Welcome back. In the last lecture, we discussed about not pull, stop, and start. In this lecture, we will talk about AKS cluster stop and start. So, stopping the cluster will stop control plane and agent node altogether while storing the cluster state. You can just pick up where you left off and have cluster running only when it is required. It helps in saving compute cost. There are some limitations also. This feature is only supported for virtual machine scale set backend cluster. The cluster state of a stopped AKS cluster is preserved for up to 12 months. If your cluster is stopped for more than 12 months, the cluster state cannot be recovered. So always remember this point. So if your cluster is in stopped state for 12 months, you won't be able to start it. You can only start or delete a stopped AKS cluster to perform any operations like scale or upgrade you have to start your cluster first. The customer provision private endpoint linked to private cluster need to be deleted and recreated again when you start a stop AKS cluster. And also remember, stop process drains all the nodes, so any standalone pod which is not being managed by deployment, stateful set, daemon set, job, etc. will be deleted. There are few important points to remember. If you are using pod disruption budget, the stop operation can take longer as drain process will take more time to complete. Don't repeat start and stop cluster. It may result in error. Once the cluster is stopped, you should wait for 15 to 30 minutes before you start the cluster again. The IP address of API server may change after cluster restart. This is very important point. In case cluster autoscaler is enabled, when you start cluster, number of worker node may not be in minimum and maximum range. When your cluster scales up, the minimum and maximum values will impact, right? So now we get understanding on AKS cluster stop and start operation. Now let's directly jump into Azure portal and see that in action. I have the same AKS cluster running, which we used in our last demo in user node pool stop and start. Let's open the cloud shell in different tab. Now let's run kubectl get nodes command to see the number of nodes. I can see there are two worker nodes. First worker node is part of node pool one and second worker node is part of user node pool. Now let's run the command to stop the AKS cluster. AZ AKS stop hyphen hyphen name my AKS cluster hyphen hyphen resource hyphen group my resource group. Hit enter. This command will take some time. Let's come back once the command is successful. The command is now successful. Let's switch to the other tab to see it from the AKS bullet. Hit refresh. Right, so both the node pools are in stop state, and that's the difference in between user node pool stop start and AKS cluster stop start. When you stop AKS cluster, it will stop your system node pool as well. When you stop node pool, it can only stop user node pool, but AKS cluster stop can stop both user node pool as well as system node pool. Also, it will store the cluster state so that you can start from where you left off. Right, and the use case for cluster stop and start is when you are running a deployment server which is not required to run continuously and you want that server to be down on weekend basis. So you can just go ahead and stop your cluster. That will bring down both user node pool as well as system node pool. It will save on compute cost. And when you are back on Monday, you can start your cluster again. All right, now switch back to the cloud shell and start the cluster. I will run AZ AKS start. That will bring up both system node pool as well as user node pool. And one very important point to remember here is if you are running any standalone pool that is not being managed by deployment, stateful set, daemon set, job, that will be deleted as part of stop operation. Let's switch back to the other tab and see the status. Click on refresh. Both node groups are getting started. Let's wait for some time. We will be back once both the node pools are started. I waited for two minutes. Now let's hit on refresh. I can see both of my node pools are now up and running. Let's switch to the cloud shell. Run kubectl get nodes command. Both of my nodes are now running. Right, so that's it for this demo. I hope you liked it. Thank you.